Hi again, everybody. This video is sponsored by a contribution from Anonymous, and here's his story. I enjoy your videos. You had me rolling on the floor on some of them. Anyway, my story is about my employer fake friend whom I worked for for 14 years. This June, whom I found out 11 years and three months of, four, of the 14 years that he is a covert narcissist. I first met him I first met him when I worked for 14, when I was 17 years old. I am now 53 years old. I am an automotive technician by trade. Been since I was 14. His place is in my neighborhood and he has owned it since 1980. I worked there briefly that year. I had to quit when my mom became very ill. I had to take care of her until she died two years later. I still hung around his shop off and on, but his contempt was very obvious to me then, and I didn't think much of him. I didn't think much of him neither, and life still went on. I have done many things I'm not proud of. I used cocaine because of the narcissists that were in my life at the time, which I am naturally no contact with to this day. I returned to the neighborhood in 1988 after yet escaping another narcissist. I moved in with my aunt in that same neighborhood opposite the other end of the block. I worked at an auto shop in 1991 and worked there for 10 years, during which I went to school at Universal Technical Institute, UTI, and successfully completed automotive and diesel courses and got my certificate. Note, I previously took these same courses at my local community college, but these courses were phased out. In 1999, shortly after I graduated from UTI, my aunt had a stroke and I had to help, and I had to help take care of her. In, in 2001, my job closed down and I really briefly worked on my own. In 2002, I regretfully started working at this same neighborhood shop after his two mechanics quit and didn't realize then that he had, that he had me lined up as his next target. He would drive, drive up and down my alley as I worked behind my house. He'd stop and make, he'd stop by and make small talk, but I thought nothing of it, of this, seeing that his place was just down the alley and that I have known him since 1980. And now that I think about it, it's really kind of strange because one, at the end of my alley is the main avenue you drive across at the end of which is the driveway to his establishment. His place is a two bay former service station on a three quarter city block lot surrounded by a huge fence at which the front of it is chain link, which his office has a huge picture window looking down my alley. I'll send you a picture of it and YouTube video relating to our interactions just for your amusement. He practically begged me to come work for him and seemed like a good idea at the time because it was down the street and I could check in on my aunt when she needed me and we really needed the money. How wrong was I? How wrong was I? I know I know where this is going and I know a guy Actually, I know a few guys are in the same exact situation, have been in the same exact situation with these narcissists. And it's always, this is always males. It's always male on male, okay? And these male narcissists who own businesses, who own properties, who own things, look for people who are down, who are susceptible, so then they can go on and control their lives. And a lot of times, a lot of times, and we're going to go back to this well again, it's closeted gay guys doing it. Now, I don't know because I haven't read this, but I am expecting to find some really strange sexual stuff with this guy. Here's where it starts getting crazy, and it's really hard for me to explain these events, but I'll do my best. I hope you can comprehend it. It sure as hell is for me. I don't know where to begin from all from here. All I can say is he went full narc on me the first two weeks after his niece came there to covert to covertly assess me and ask me, "Are you familiar with MPD?" I said, "No. What is it?" She only gave me an evil smirk. Whenever my aunt would call, he got mad and jealous and jealous in other 
and in jealous way, other times he'd eavesdrop, or when people knew I came by, he would privately ask them intrusive questions about me and would use that information against me, and I felt really awful. And I felt really awful, but me immediately afterwards, I found out something about him. I felt majestic instead. He used people in my neighborhood to spy, to spy on me. Some of them either moved away or died. He'd always put pressure on me for helping my aunt, like he wanted every second of my time to himself. Just helping her was much pressure on me, and he seemed to tighten the screws on me more and find ways to berate me, then quickly morph into my best friend. This is my friend's exact story. This is my friend's exact story. This guy is a closeted gay guy. The jealousy, the going around, getting, telling your business to other people in town, having other people spy on, and it's always... It's always these business owners who have a little bit of money, actually probably a lot of money, and people, everybody wants everything from them, and they're evil manipulative. And what it is, is he's looking for, like, and this guy can't be honest with himself that he's gay, and this is where it's all coming from. This is like a jealous girlfriend. And then they do the same thing. They flip out on you, and then they morph into your best friend happens every, this is not all that uncommon, believe me. I know somebody who telling your exact story. He would get me to play lottery, even though I did that many years prior, he would often play my numbers with his, and he always kept track with the numbers. I played, I caught $600 with him one time, and he acted like he didn't want to give me my tickets after I thundered at him, and he never and he never played for me again. But he still somehow kept track of what, what I played. He had a thing that if one of us caught it, caught it, lunch was on the winner. It was cool if he won, but but it, if I won, he just, he'd gotten really pissed and would punish me in some sort of gaslighting. He would covertly sabotage me at times, some almost resulting in serious injury or death without lifting a finger. And I really believe with all that's in, in me into some form of dark arts. He some way sabotaged me to miss a hundred, a hundred thousand. He, he some way sabotaged me to piss a hundred K away. And I pissed away 7,002 to pursue it. He one time stood in the middle of the lot intensely, but blankly stared at me. He was very happy. I missed it, making a poor attempt to hide it. He would always... He would always walk around in a rage until I missed my numbers, which made him happy afterwards. He'd always flip-flop from boss to friend. He seemed helpful of taking care of my... He seemed helpful of me taking care of my aunt's affairs when she was in a hospice. She passed away on New Year's Day, 2010. After that, my gallbladder went bad Thanksgiving week, 2012. I worked two days into the gallbladder attack, not because of him, mind you. I was admitted into the hospital Thanksgiving night, drove myself there. Had to have it removed that Saturday with the conventional eight inch scar, two weeks total off work. He had all the signs of spiraling. After that, my girlfriend is 15 years, suddenly got sick and died. That all but mortally wounded my soul. The narc wanted to jump on me for yelling at him to put the phone down, but he thought better of it. I gained back my strength two, week, two months later. I had business cards made for, for, his shop, for his shop and me, and some way he found out about them. Don't know if he looked in my truck while prancing the yard or his flying monkey or alcoholic son whom were my friends on Facebook, peeped them on my cover photo and told him, but he berated me and said I was false advertising and needed to burn every one of them, and that he had a really thrilled look on his face as he said this, but as a precaution, I deleted and blocked them both. After I went to church one Sunday, I felt really bad I had this terrible backache 
and I felt really terrible, like I was about to die. The pastor called a prayer line for kidney conditions. Something told me to go, and I did. He prayed for me, and I felt much better. The next week, the pastor called another prayer line for people bound by witchcraft. Something again told me to go, and I went. He prayed for me, and my mind became clear. Something about YouTube kept nagging me, and you guessed it. The title, The Narcissist, was this Labor Day weekend. The title, Narcissist, was Labor Day weekend 2013. I started out with an introductory video. I think I went through maybe 500 or so videos on different channels. I was frozen just watching channel after a channel that entire weekend. My whole perspective changed after that. It made all the sense and sense afterwards. I was really frightened and pissed at the same time. But I was different. I came in that Tuesday. He just walked up to me, looked in my face, looked down at my chest, and walked away. Later that day, I was on my knees looking through my tools. I was in my own thoughts, and there was the narc just staring hard at me with a blank expression. I was going to try to ignore him, but I just stared, but just, but just stared, just as intense right back in his face. His were blinking, his were blinking madly. I looked away a split second and he was suddenly gone. Last week we had a discussion about 2002 and I said that year and this month marks my 14th anniversary working here. And he smugly asked, how did you manage 14 years under my leadership? I modestly but seriously said, I guess being a real man, he replied, yeah, right. Before my girlfriend died, I didn't know nothing about narcissism. I was, on, I was able to bounce him away from me like nothing. But afterwards, he kept, he, he attempted to go for the kill, but God showed me the truth in time. He really hates me, I guess, because I see him for the person he really is, and I treat him accordingly and I don't expect anything from him, and I'm able to find out problems with many things, including people. It's much more to do that. It's much more to this. I will break this down smaller. Hope you got something out of this story to see this narc as he really is. I know it's too long to read, but I'll just look for an email or just a short interpretation on a video. In that case, you can, you can call me by my name. I won't use it here. Because, because of what I'm saying. Also, I'm much better. I know the truth as to where I can protect myself. I met a beautiful lady whom I married. The narc knows nothing about this and I don't make it obvious. I'm on to him. I need to write another story and lastly, we do a split 50-50 split on all jobs. He has made statements like you're making too much money and now you don't give a fuck about your job. In reality, all I do I do all the work. He looks out the window all day, or tend to his dogs, which he feeds by hand. We'll keep in touch. I really need solid clarity on this. Sky doesn't hate you. Sky's in love with you. This guy's in love with you. And he's a narcissist. And he doesn't know how to handle it. I know a guy who is in the exact same situation. Instead of working for a mechanic, this guy, the guy, my friend, works for a guy who owns a shit ton of properties. And his job is to maintain, is maintaining properties for this guy. And the guy does the exact same shit. Shows up at his house, violates his privacy, goes to people around town, gets involved in his business, calls up the bank to find out about his car payments, his truck payments. Same thing your boss is doing, this guy's doing with your lottery tickets, is the same thing that this, this other guy's boss does to him in his life. It is a gay attraction. That's why he gets butt hurt. Anything that takes attention away from him, he gets jealous of your aunt, your girlfriend who died, your new wife you're married to. Why do you think you're really not telling them? <clears throat> you're not telling them because of all the bullshit that you're going to, to receive. But what does the bullshit, what is it comparable to? 
he acts like a jealous, scorned girlfriend, a jealous woman. You got to see this for what this is. This dude's in love with you. And his narc rages are rages over what he can't have. So he figures if he can control you enough through the lottery, through the bullshit, that he'll someday maybe be able to, you'll never leave him. Because it sounds like that's all anybody in this guy's life does is leave him. Remember, you placed two mechanics who quit at the same time. Wonder why. The sister asked you if you knew what NPD was. So they obviously know he has it. But they don't know the real source of it. The real source of it is this guy's gay. And he can't face it. But he can't let you go either. This is a spurned woman. Look at this guy as a woman who wants what they can't have makes more sense now, right? All his behaviors. And I would guarantee fucking tea it. I would guarantee it. He's not outwardly sexual aggressive towards you like he's ever tried to make a move. And I promise you, he's probably always talking about his dick or sex or pissing out in public or whipping his dick out wherever he fucking feels like it. I guarantee it. Guarantee it. All that manipulative bullshit he's doing, all of it is to cover for the fact that he is gay and he is in love with you at this point and you are his new target and he doesn't want to face it. That's where this is all coming from. All of it. And it's not even necessarily you. I think this guy will probably fall in love with any guy who kind of were. He wouldn't hire anybody he's not going to fall in love with. But this is what he does. This is how he deals with being gay. Instead of just admitting it and doing what he wants to do and moving on with his life, this is how he handles it. And that's what, and I'm telling you, that's your clarity. That's what's going on with this guy. That's what's happening. The jealousy over the aunt, the girlfriend, the hiding of your new wife. Uh, come on, man. This is what you would do with a psycho ex-girl. This is how you would react around the psycho ex-girlfriend. This is the narcissistic boss as a psycho ex-girlfriend. Hiding. It is what it is. So... Thank you so much for your contribution. Uh, thank you for the story. Um, I had some, we had some problem hooking up and getting me the story. I know it's not complete what you, what you wanted to send me, but believe me, I got the gist. I know your story. I've heard this exact story. And believe me, this is what's going on, man. So good luck. Thank you again. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any uh, opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, if you have a topic you want me to cover, a narcissist you want to expose, you know what to do with the PayPal link in the description box. I'll have the video right back to you. This is Ali Matthews. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all again soon. Bye.